Hey everybody, welcome to Crackpot, the podcast where each and every week we dive into a different conspiracy theory and we discuss the merits or the demerits of each. We're your hosts, I'm Tim. And I'm Zach. Hello, Zach. Welcome back, my welcome, friend. I was going to say, welcome back, my friend. How are you? This time I'm truly welcoming you back, though, because okay. you're back, actually. I am actually back. Yeah, and you sound and look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're going to have to edit a lot of coughing out of these There's episodes. no coughing going on. I'm fine. I'm healthy. How are you? Dude, I, I am literally 100%. That's great. Yeah. Yeah? So I'm dealing with, you know, this happens every year in Minnesota, which is like you sit in this eternal winter slash kind of weird spring situation, yep. Yep. and then all of a sudden it just gets hot. Like it gets really hot quickly. Yes. Today's no exception. I even turned the air conditioning on. Which I think this is the first time I've ever been here in the air conditioning. It's I never running. use my air conditioning <laughs> unless I absolutely have to. Yeah. <laughs> so If it gets above 72 degrees outside, my AC is going on like that. Internal temp of the house has got to be like mid 80s for me to, even, oh my think, to even think about it. Oh my God. And usually then I think about it, I go, I'm not turning it on. Nah, around. not today. Nah, not today. You got you to gotta, you gotta feel that weather. Bro. I run that AC like nine months out of the year. <laughs> you, do, you probably do. I, doesn't matter. Anyways, yeah. Anyways, moving right along. We got a topic here today. Hey, what? what's going we, on? <laughs> we do have a topic today. Okay. Um, We're talking, we're talking music. We got another fun music conspiracy. Huh. Although perhaps it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, so now I'm lost. But uh, we, we, we've done some legitimately fun yes. music topics. Oh, yeah. My favorite may have been the Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. That was like season two, maybe. That's season one, I think. Holy buckets, folks. Listen to some of those. Yeah. It's a very... Andrew WK. Yeah. That, that might have been one episode, yep. actually. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> oh, Elvis, yeah. Beatles, uh, Michael Jackson's been in there. Yeah, probably one or two more. Probably Nickelback a one couple. Or yeah, Nickelback. I think yeah. we definitely covered. We did a two-parter on Nickelback. Yeah, so. Tupac. Tupac. Thank it's our you. Tagline. Speaking of uh, two-parters, right? Have you ever heard Zach of a little musician by the name of Lady Gaga? No, but I've heard of Stefani Joan Angelina <laughs> Germanata. Nice try, St- <laughs> Stephanie Germanata. That's Stephanie Germanata is Lady Gaga's. Oh, it's given the same name. person. It's the same? Uh, oh my gosh, yeah. what? So, yeah, Stephanie Germanata, aka Lady Gaga, aka yeah. Mother Monster. Cool name. AKA Tony Bennett's duet partner <laughs> before he died as well. I don't, she's been around, man. She'd make some good music. <laughs> Did, Honestly, what what what's your take on Lady Gaga? Do you like her stuff? I you know I don't listen to her music, but uh-huh. when I hear it on, I appreciate it. She's yeah. got a great she's got a great voice. She's got a great voice. Yep, and I like her political activism. I like what she stands for. I respect that. You like her fashion sense? <laughs> yeah, I've adopted it clearly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Zach here. If you're not watching the uh, video at home, he is actually wearing a meat suit. So, just I don't got know. it back from the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> Classy, classy. All right, well, Stephanie Germanata, a.k.a. Lady Gaga, as you probably know, is a 13-time Grammy Award winner, won Academy Award, and two Golden Globes, won BAFTA and three Brit Awards. So she's quite accomplished. 13? 13. That's insane. I couldn't name more than probably three songs of hers. Yeah. But you know them. That's the thing. Oh, 100%. I was going to say, like, I'm just shocked by the sheer number. Yeah. Yeah. She Well, she puts out good stuff, and she has great producers, and she's yeah. a talented, hard, hardworking individual. So It gives us something to aim for. Yeah, for right. At least. We're at 12. Well, I'm working on my EGOT, so I don't know where you're at. But, <laughs> but there we go. So she is the subject of our show today. But, Zach, there is another important character. Actually, there's a few important characters, but the other main important character that I need to introduce to you is Lena Morgana. Mm. Have you ever heard of Lena Morgana? No. In an alternate universe, you would have heard of Lena Morgana and never heard of Lady Gaga. Okay. Because... Lena, and we'll get into all this, Lena Morgana was supposed to be the next big thing. Huh. Until Lady Gaga came along and maybe might have killed her. Or had her killed? Or had her killed. Dang. Either way, I suppose if, yeah, 
N- neither of those are good. Neither of those are good. All right. We'll break it down. But uh, holy smokes. So Lena Morgana, a.k.a. Elena Kostaglueva. She is from or was born in Russia. Her parents are from Russia. She was born in 1989, January of 1989. I should have mentioned that uh, Lady Gaga uh, was born in 86. Not that that matters too much. Mm. But Lena Morgana, uh, her parents divorced and she and her mother moved to the United States. And actually ended up in Kentucky, of all places, which is not where I would have suspected uh, people to emigrate to. But she unfortunately passed away. And the official ruling is that she died by suicide after jumping off a 10-story hotel roof in Staten Island in 2008. Mm. So that is the front and uh, back of her story here. But a little bit more about her. She was 19 years old when she died. Wow. Of course, you've probably done the math already, but she was a singer, songwriter, and incredibly talented one at that. Mm. And she worked with a gentleman by the name of Rob Fusari, who we'll get into in just a moment. She recorded and mastered, a, a, I believe, over 24 songs. Holy cow. And was ready to release the album and um, tragically died. Well... It's uh, always sad when people die, and so we'll probably joke about things. We don't mean to, you know, be offensive here, but, like, I'm actually surprised that that many songs were recorded. Like, mm-hmm. she got, was, like, on the cusp of being famous, yeah. like, so yeah. quickly. That's crazy. Exactly. All right, well, let's talk about Rob Fusari real quick. I, otherwise known as 8-Bit, if you're uh, into checking credits on <laughs> songs, that's, that's his producer name, 8-Bit. He's born in 1967 in New Jersey. He has produced uh, Destiny's Child. Uh, He did Bootylicious, believe it or not. He produced Whitney Houston. He produced uh, Wild Wild West by your favorite, Will Smith. (laughs) Why are you laughing, Zach? You're always like, I love hip hop. I I have all of Will Smith's entire catalog. (laughs) Early 2000s movies with like hip hop hit tie ins are the best. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So Rob Fusari is the producer for both Lena and Lady Gaga. Hold on tight there. One more person we need to introduce Lena's mother, Yana Morgana. She claims that Lena's death was not a suicide and was in fact foul play and she has pointed her finger squarely directly at Lady Gaga as the person or people responsible for her daughter's death it's actually shocking because usually these types of like conspiracy theories come up in like a reddit sub yeah yeah you know chat or something where it's like some fans kind of put like one and one together and mm-hmm. they're like okay this is maybe lady god but like this is this is the mother of the deceased this is the mother of the deceased and there's a lot of kind of weird questionable stuff going on mm-hmm. so i well <laughs> okay let me just start out right off the bat here so you have you know two up and coming pop stars one is just on the cusp of getting famous she dies by suicide. The other one's career takes off. Um, do you, just with those details alone, suspect any foul play? Well, I mean, it's possible to have like one, more than one like pop star in the zeitgeist at a time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I would say like just the fact that, you know, hey, she worked with some of the same people. Um, like she could have also been equally famous and not taken away from Lady Gaga. Sure, I have to sure. assume. You would assume. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that's my immediate reaction. Like uh, y- you would need to bring me along with some more yeah. evidence to point kind of at this, but I don't know. Fair so, enough. But yeah. it is, I mean, it's already sounding a little bit weird. It's weird. All right. Okay. Well, let's, let's go through the timeline here. So Lena, Lena Morgana, she met Rob Fusari in 2005 as did Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga also met Rob in 2005 through a woman by the name of Wendy Starlin. So Rob Fusari told Wendy Starlin, who was working for him, uh, go out and find me the next big thing. Mm. I want the next huge star. I want her to be female. I want her to be under 25. And I want, this is his words, not mine, the equivalent to the lead singer of The Strokes. So Julian Casablanca in a female under 25 version, singer songwriter. Okay. How hard could that be? How hard? Yeah, I mean, it's New York, right? You just throw a rock and you hit someone essentially. 
Well, anyway, uh, Wendy Starland, she goes to uh, the New York's cutting room and sees her and saw her perform with a couple other people. And she's like, this woman has a stage presence. She's edgy. She's smart. She can sing. Mm. And she writes her own songs. Uh, Yes, please. No kidding. So she brings her on board and introduces her to Rob Fusari. Now, when she was brought in originally, despite what I said, Rob was using her to write songs for Lena. So Lady Gaga, he wasn't kind of honing her yet to be the next big thing. He was just kind of almost like keeping her in his stable, kind of like, yeah, yeah, you you stay here, you help out and we'll, we'll launch you when we're ready. So she was brought in as a songwriter. And she was helping co-write and write songs for Lena. There's also a couple of um, uh, music videos that were filmed for Lena as well, where Lady Gaga is seen as a background dancer uh, as well. So that's that's kind of interesting. But they keep going, they keep working, and Rob and Lady are writing these. Can I call her Lady, or can I call her Gaga, or? Yeah, what is the right I don't term, know, name. Mother Monster. So L- Rob and Gaga are writing these songs together, and they start to get kind of close. They start to see each other often, and mm. before you know it, a, uh, a romantic relationship evolves between the two of them. And so they're not just business partners. They're also uh, partners, <laughs> I guess. Okay. So anyway, uh, but... Throughout this, Rob Fusari helped her kind of hone her voice, work on her craft, her stage presence, help her write songs and so on. And I mean, he's clearly a very talented guy. He's worked with some incredibly talented uh, musicians along the way. So so he knows what he's talking about and she's soaking it all in and she's just loving life. And Lady Gaga records about 15 to 20 songs with him. Hmm. Not not fully completed, but like demos and like, you know, master demos, that, that kind of thing. Not like ready to release sort of stuff. So anyway, around this time, Rob and his crew are shopping Lena Morgana out and trying to, you know, be like, hey, she's got these songs. She's got this vibe. She's got this look. Can you give her a record deal? Finally gets her a record deal. Everyone's incredibly happy. She's going to have her own MTV documentary on her. Oh, wow. So, I mean, like, they are just pushing this. Mm -hmm. The industry is ready for Lena Morgana to absolutely take off. So, they're getting ready to launch Lena's career. Everything seems to be going good. And Lady Gaga gets a record deal as well. Mm -hmm. Lady Gaga goes in and she records an album. The album is called uh, The Fame. You may have heard of it. It sold, I don't know, 12 million copies. So kind of a big deal. Not bad. Not too shabby for a uh, a freshman debut, if you will. But August 19th, 2008, Lady Gaga releases The Fame. The album, The Fame. And it starts to take off. Hmm. And it starts to eclipse... Lena Morgana and you can see like I I don't know if you remember this at the time but like all of a sudden I remember that summer it was like all of a sudden Lady Gaga was everywhere it's like never heard of her and then it's like every magazine every time you turn on the radio everywhere you go it's Lady Gaga like 24 7 yeah and so that was released on August 19th 2008 on October 4th 2008 so it's about two and a half months later Lena Morgana leaves her duplex where she lives with her mom on Staten Island, and she takes about a five-minute walk from her house to a hotel. She's able to go into the hotel, climb up all the way to the roof. She's seen dancing, according to some, Mm. on the roof. And the next thing you know, uh, she is not on the roof anymore she is on the sidewalk below wow and no one really knows anything else like how why who anything was it suicide was it foul play right as i mentioned at the beginning officially listed as death by suicide but the 
interesting thing is not that Lena was a household name or anything like that at mm-hmm. this point, but there was no obituary. There was no news. There was nothing listed of her death with her name. There was an article or two about a person who jumped off of this 10 story hotel yeah. and said, so, you know, taken to the hospital DOA. Um, but, Names were never attached to that. There was no follow up. And like I said, there was no obituary. So kind of interesting. I don't know if that's suspicious or what, but it's it's well, it sounds like yeah, a few red flags because, you know, her career's on the ascent. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And she's working with all the right people. And like I said earlier, like more than one person can be famous at it. Absolutely. Yep. Um, to see her dancing, maybe having fun. Like on the Right. Yeah. And just then all put her over the edge or something. Maybe. Yeah. It, like, so there's some red flags there. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So four months later, finally, four months pass, her family puts out an announcement of Lena's death on her MySpace page. Yes, MySpace was still a thing in 2008. And uh, her fans found out that way, more or less. Yeah, and as I said, throughout all this, Lady Gaga's career just rockets to hmm. the stratosphere. And... Interestingly, May 29th, 2009, the video for Paparazzi was released. I want you to listen to this. So this is one of the first clues here. So I have a song here. I'm going to play a a short clip of Lena Morgana's Innocent. Listen to the beat here. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Now I want you to listen to the beat from Paparazzi. Okay. Okay. I want to keep listening to both these. Songs. <laughs> I know, right? Why are we recording? The I love show? paparazzi. It's such a good song. <laughs> uh, okay. So here's what I'd say. Um, full disclosure: I don't think they sound that similar, but also, I'm just kind of hearing uh, Lady Morgana song or Lena Morgana song yeah. for the first yep. time. Yep. Yep. Um, so I have to study a little bit more carefully, get the audio files mm-hmm. pulled up, etc. Um, but I mean, like, hey, look, what kind of the same producer coming out of the same like you know music factory yeah, if you will yeah so i could understand how just naturally probably those influences so you don't you sound. don't think that lady gaga stole the beat from her mm-hmm. killed her and then created paparazzi not with just that exhibit okay so if we have more evidence to proffer <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to uh, happy to observe it and listen all to right it. well also from the paparazzi video, I won't be able to show this because it'll get flagged on YouTube. But if you do watch a video, which is a really great seven minute, huge production video, so on and so forth. It starts out. Have you seen it? No. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, maybe you have. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. Is she flying or something? Uh, probably okay. at one point. I don't know. Uh, it starts out with Lady Gaga standing on a balcony with a gentleman. And all of a sudden, he pushes her Ooh. over the edge, and she falls to her death. Really? Yes. So she released this not long after the. This was the first ugh. like single after Lena died. That's not very tasteful. Interesting, though, isn't it? Yeah, that is. Okay. That's and that's weird. not it. It doesn't end there. After she falls on the ground, the video shows these newspaper headlines like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. So on and so forth. One of the newspaper headlines that they flash across the screen says, Lady No More Gaga. Hmm. What do you think about that? Just the phrasing. Well. (laughs) Can I put some words in your mouth? Yeah, go ahead. Is it a little clunky, Zach? Yeah, it is. Lady No More Gaga? Yeah. yeah, Like, are you trying to say Lady Gaga is no more? Right. No more Lady Gaga? Pick I mean, one and go with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's no, it's Lady No More Gaga. But for those with a keen uh, ear, uh, yes. it kind of sounds like Lena Morgana. Say uh, the headline one more time. Lady me. No More Gaga. Mm-hmm. Lena Morgana. <laughs> There we have it. I'm sold. <laughs> Proof's in the pudding, folks. Oh. But, I mean, it is weird, yeah. right? I was kind of wondering if it was like an anagram. <laughs> oh, that could be. I haven't, uh, I don't have the time to, to figure that out <laughs> yeah. on the on the fly, but it probably is. Let's it just say that. It probably is. Uh, okay. Weird. Not cool. Also, the video, that's, to me, like, really distinct. Yeah. Falling over the edge and dying? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. super weird. I'm not going to okay. hammer on that point too much harder, but okay. So the aftermath of 
Lena Morgana's death, you know, as I mentioned, her family doesn't really say anything for four months. Finally, they post something on Lena's MySpace page. And in that post, which I'm not going to read, but you can find it online, Lena's mother, Yana, accuses, directly accuses Lady Gaga of stealing Lena's style, Mm. Lena's fashion, Lena's music, and Lena's backstory. Her backstory, too? Yes. Uh... Okay, so here's the weird thing. I couldn't find any interviews of Lady Gaga talking about how she had like a, a rough and tumble upbringing yeah, in Russia. <laughs> well, she never said Russia. OK, I have to assume she never said <laughs> Russia. But um, apparently, according to Lena's mother, mm-hmm. Lady Gaga was saying that she had a really rough childhood and like it shaped who she was as an artist, et cetera, et cetera. You know the story. Yeah. Um, Lady Gaga was actually a very wealthy, came from a very wealthy family and very, you know, upper class, if not upper middle class kind of uh, upbringing. She went to the same high school as um, uh, Paris Hilton or something like that. So it's like, yeah, you you weren't that poor off or anything like that. But same thing with the fashion sense. Um, Lena was never going around wearing like meat dresses Mm -hmm. or Kermit the Frog outfits. But she did have a very distinct style, and it might just be the choice of photos and angles and that sort of thing, but the way her mother shows this, they do look very similar. Like, they're both wearing low-cut V-neck black dresses with, like, red high heels or something like that. And it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, that's kind of weird. They're both dressing the same, but to your point earlier, it's the same, you know, it's the same music industry it's the same yeah you know hit factory that they're coming out of so precisely it's probably not that much of a stretch to think that they're getting the same fashion advice perhaps well if you think about it going back to the original idea of a female sub 25 julian casablancas it's kind of like <laughs> i guess just by that alone you're going to have kind of the same vibe for yeah whoever it is. I mean, but right? still you know but still okay So um, after Lena died, uh, Rob and Lady Gaga, they broke up. Their relationship came to an end. He ended up suing Lady Gaga for $30 million in owed royalties. Dang. And um, also starts saying that Gaga stole some of Lena's songs as well. Oh, he did? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, snap. Right. Dang. Now, what's on YouTube is not probably everything that exists in Lena's catalog Mm because obviously she died and this is all being released by I would assume people at the record company or or whoever else got their tapes on or their hands on the masters but I couldn't find anything personally not saying that it doesn't exist or it's not legitimate but I don't have anything to back that up but anyway so now you have her mom and the record producer both saying that Lady Gaga was stealing songs That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that actually says something, I think. Also, an interesting side note, Lady Gaga has never addressed this. Oh. She, I mean, obviously she's not going to come out and say, you know, deny accusations Mm -hmm. that she murdered someone. I mean, she would be crazy to open up her mouth and say anything to that nature. But she's even gone so far as to say, like, I never really knew her. We were coworkers. Maybe I met her once or twice. Oh. But could the, that be true though? It theoretically could be true. Sure. We don't know. Now, the way it would be true is if like Lady Gaga's brought in to write songs and a backup dancer. It's mm-hmm. like, sure, maybe they've interacted and crossed paths and talked at the water cooler, but they're not like going out and having drinks yeah. every night. The flip side of that is like, hey, these are two you know, young female musicians in New York on the cusp of making it big, working for the same producer in the same recording studio. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they hang out? Why wouldn't they know each other? Exactly. Just by nature of proximity. Yeah. It's like, did you know her or not? Because some people say they were best friends. Some people say they were close friends. Some, and then you have Lady Gaga, who's like, mm, I never really knew her. I, I don't have anything to say about her. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing. Okay. Another suspicious fact. Very suspicious. Thank you. Okay. So those are the facts as we need them, as we, uh, as we, as I present them. Sure. I think we have everything we need to dive into the 
various conspiracy theories here and debunk them or or not. I don't know. Okay, so let me let me go back to what I asked you asked you earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. With this information now, where are you at? Okay, so you can believe that Lady Gaga like stole or misallocated Lena Morgana's music and right. or imagery or whatever. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. You can you can believe that, and that can be true. Having Lady M- Lena Morgana yep. off yep. can be an entirely separate yep. discussion. That's true. So I still believe both. That's okay. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, I think we need to very, put that right. Very yeah, allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're all in is what I'm hearing. And or on the fence? I'm I'm pretty much all in while being on the fence. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. In typical crackpot fashion. <laughs> right. <laughs> so first conspiracy theory. Lena Morgana's mother claims that Lady Gaga is holding Lena's soul. Oh, that I believe. Yeah. She said, quote, Lady Gaga is holding Lena's soul and I want her to be free. Hmm. Well, I guess you could say figure it. <laughs> right? like, yeah, it's probably a mistranslation or something like that. Yeah. Or, Literally um, holding her soul, though, that would be pretty, pretty tough. That'd be pretty dark. Yeah. But then again, I mean, hey, you've you've seen her before. She's a weird. She's a weird cat. True. Wouldn't put a past her. Right. Yeah. True. Okay. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Here's here's the next one. Lena was under psychic control of the Illuminati, and they told her to jump. So she did. The Illuminati are involved. Yes. The, well, the well, Illuminati. The, uh, actually, yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Go. You you could say the Illuminati being a secretive organization that mm-hmm. control the power, you know, all over the world. Yes. Including pop culture, I have to assume. So maybe, maybe mm-hmm. they said, okay, we can only have one. Looks like Lady Gaga's the horse to bet on here. So let's uh-huh. let's put our money on on her. Let's have the other one offed. Precisely. Huh. If you watch her videos or see her photo shoots, she's often doing the uh, the eye thing where, you know, it's like the sure. OK symbol where you put it up to your eye, which is supposed to represent the eye of Horus mm. on top of the uh, the pyramid on the back of the you know one dollar bill. If you've ever seen the back of a one dollar bill, she makes those uh, triangle Illuminati Ooh. symbols quite often in videos and on you know red carpets and stuff like that, yeah. which can we say this in front of the public? I mean, it, it's one of the first things you learn when you join the Illuminati. So hypothetically, I, I, hypothetically, read, if yeah. if we were invited into the Illuminati <laughs> and they showed us some of the things, this is one of the first things. So that you learn, yeah, that we learn, or, yeah. In that theory, they a teach person you. would learn. <laughs> right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're clear. So, um, and yeah, like I said, psychic control. They told her to jump. They wanted her gone, and and she had no choice but to listen. Well. Whew. I have a harder time believing this. Okay. All right. (laughs) Um, I don't generally believe in the Illuminati. Say more. Well, (laughs) while there are... Can you say that? (laughs) I didn't say that. It's AI. You know, while... Okay, there are definitely powerful groups of people in the world. Like... I don't think there's one brand there's, that would be behind this. And they all get together, yeah. you know, on, on the third Wednesday of every month at the local Denny's. And yeah. they have little business cards that say Illuminati. Because to me, it's like, you know, look, um, they'd probably be happier if both women were making money as opposed to just one. True. Well, the record studio would probably be happier with that. But the Illuminati, maybe they only need one. Sure. I, we'll have to ask, or, you know. We'll have to yeah. do some research. <laughs> Thank <laughs> talk, you. Talk to our sources. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, that's a, that's a conspiracy theory, and that's out there. Uh, this is the big one. Lady Gaga murdered Lena because she was getting in the way. So would this be like an active push off the ledge? Or? Well, we can take this two different ways. Um, we can say that she was on the roof mm-hmm. and pushed her off, mm-hmm. or she talked to a guy who knew a guy that could take care of the situation. Yeah, that's smart. Mm-hmm. Well, would there be anything, any other evidence to point to her being behind the, the death? No, because she was in Los Angeles filming the paparazzi video. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> yeah. alibi. Ah, uh, yeah. So naturally. I'm she was in L.A. filming a video of her being pushed off a balcony yeah. when her rival was pushed off a balcony. 
Mm. Right, right. Seems suspicious. Okay, so she she was not the person to do the pushing, clearly, obviously. Yeah, which uh, would make sense. You probably, yeah, you want to pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> right. Um, just cover your tracks. Allegedly. Yeah. So, okay, but I mean, the fact that she was, like, doing something, like, making a video mm-hmm. about this specific act while it's basically happening is weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, where are you at? Um, I'm, I'm on the lower side of believability. Okay, okay. Somewhere in the 10 to 20% range, yeah, more or yeah, less. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, here's a theory that says Lady Gaga murdered Lena to appease the Illuminati because they required a blood sacrifice. So this was, this, this is the last two combined, basically. It's having your cake and eating it too. But the interesting thing is reports vary on what she was doing on that roof. There were some people who said that she was dancing and then fell. There was uh, one person who said that she was pushed. She saw her being pushed. Another person said that she clearly jumped on her own volition. Sure. So it's like, who knows, really? And there's no cameras on the top of a hotel in Staten Island, so there's no video footage to go back and look at. But you have at least three different people giving three completely different accounts of this. Yeah. Um, Anyway, but to go back to this, uh, Lady Gaga had to murder her in order to get into the Illuminati because in order to get into into the Illuminati, as you, I mean, as we've heard, you need to uh, have a blood sacrifice. Yeah, that's where we got held up in our application I know, process. I know. So, well, you know, um, go big or go home. I suppose you might have to do a few. You know, what do they say? You got to crack a few eggs and make <laughs> an omelet. <laughs> make an omelet. Uh, uh, ritualistic sacrifice, not uncommon, not unheard of. Nope. This wouldn't be the first one in human history. Wouldn't be the last. So therefore, lean towards yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. I like the way you think. Um, okay, there's another theory that Lady Gaga is actually in a satanic cult. I could believe that. I can too. <laughs> and I think as part of the cult, they had to kill someone. I don't know. Her song Alejandro and her song Judas both make mention to satanic rituals, and she uses the one eye symbol Mm -hmm. in both of those videos as well, Mm -hmm. obviously pointing to the fact that she is in a satanic cult. And if you're in a satanic cult, everyone knows that you end up murdering people. So mm, not so much of a stretch after all. Not a big stretch. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, she's, yeah, the gentle nod that I'm part of a satanic cult. (laughs) Because you want to advertise those things in top 40 hits. Yeah. I mean, clearly. Whenever you commit a murder, you want as much, you know, peripheral evidence. Yeah, you want to to leave clues around for those people who might be looking for something. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. Yeah. It's what all the best do. Uh, okay. Here's a here's a wild card. We're going to introduce a new character that I hadn't mentioned before. His name is Tyler Francis Schwab. He was Lena's boyfriend. Now, there's a theory that he's the one that murdered Lena. Ooh. And the idea behind this is that he was an awful human being and no one liked him and he was potentially abusive towards her. Okay. Which all kind of lines up. There are rumors out there that Lady Gaga apparently wrote the song Monster about him. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. Lady Gaga, tell us if it's true. Yeah, thank you. Uh, And he allegedly made a lot of uh, violent threats against Lena. He once broke into her house. This is the duplex that she lived in with her mother. Broke into her house and beat her up. And uh, Lena told her mom to drop all charges against him uh, because... Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, et cetera. As the story goes, allegedly, perhaps, maybe, he was at the hotel to throw her off the roof. Hmm. You know, as much as I hate to say this and to be serious, like, whenever, you know, it comes down to, like, a death, mm-hmm. a suspicious death, I should say, like, it oftentimes is the significant other. Yeah, yeah, especially someone with a violent history that's made threats in the past. Yeah. It's not too much to uh, too much of a stretch of the imagination to pin them to it. I don't know where he was that day. Mm-hmm. I don't know much more about him as a person or his history around this time. 
or anything. There's just really nothing out there. And honestly, there's not a lot about any of this, really, because like there is not a lot about Lena Morgana. Hmm. There just isn't, which is so interesting to have like a, a musician or a pop culture figure without an Internet presence. That is so true. It is bizarre. Yeah, I was actually just doing a little searching on the site. There's really not You're that like, much. You're like, who? Lena, who? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is actually a little bit So suspicious. I had to go to the library. I was looking through the microfilm and the yeah. microfiche and yeah. checking the stacks, and she's not there either. So I don't know. Anyway, but that that's a, that is a working theory. I don't know if the police ever looked into it or questioned him or whatever, but he's not locked up and was never accused or at least convicted of a crime. So, hmm. Probably then we'll have to say we can't believe his involvement, though I still kind of do. I kind of do, too, without yeah. knowing too much else. And lastly, and um, probably most tragically, the last uh, conspiracy theory is that Lena was actually severely depressed and died by suicide. Okay. Um, the idea behind this, I mean, we don't know what else was going on in her life. We don't know her mental health history. But uh, here you have someone who was being groomed and propped up and honed to be the next big musical icon. And like all of a sudden she just gets left in the slow lane and she's watching her coworker, friend, right. <laughs> comrade, whoever take off and see all the success and more that she was promised. And you know, that's gotta, it's gotta take a hit to the psyche. I would assume if you see that sort of thing. Happen. Well, well, even like, uh, you know, in the office, right. You have other people that you see that maybe, Seem to be doing the same as you or yeah. maybe not as good as what you're doing and they do better. And you're like, how does this even yeah. work? I mean, I can understand there's some jealousy there. Probably, you know, Hollywood, the entertainment industry, the music industry, a lot of promises, a lot of next big things out there. Yep. And to feel like you're on that train and then be like, no, I'm not on it anymore. Like, yeah. that would be really devastating. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, yeah, maybe it was suicides. But to cut against that, Lena's family, her mother and siblings and everyone else, all said that they did not think that she was suicidal. So that's, that is why they waited so long to post something. That's why they're so adamant in trying to find whoever did this or bring someone to oh. justice because they do not believe it was suicide. They just straight okay. up don't believe that angle. So in other words, they want a like a real thorough investigation yes. is what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. Wow. However, to cut against that, Lena Morgana's mother also said that in the past, her daughter suffered from severe depression. Okay. So um, mm. t take with that what you will. Complicated. So anyway, just to kind of wrap this all up and put a bow on it, you have two talented young musicians, both on the track to stardom. One of them is promised it. The other one passes the first and you end up with a suspicious death and a world famous pop star. Uh, it raises a few eyebrows. These suspicious death ones are tough. Yeah. Yeah. Because we obviously don't have access to the files or at the investigation, <laughs> right. and it's always like, did they check every box? That's what I'm saying. It's weird. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. suspicious. Okay. But, so, mm. let, let's start out easy. Do you think Lady Gaga potentially stole any of her fashion sense or music or beats? I believe that she could have, mm -hmm. but I would think... Hmm. I would think it's probably akin to like you listen to the Beatles for a lot, you know, yeah. a long time, and yeah. your music starts to sound like the yeah. Beatles when you mm -hmm. write music or something. Like maybe something like that, or yeah, the same Hit Factory. It's just going to sound yeah, it's very just osmosis, similar. essentially, hundred percent. Yeah. So actively stealing, eh, kind of don't believe that, yeah. but influenced, yeah, certainly. What's the George Harrison line? He said that uh, the court said that he was subconsciously plagiarizing. So, anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. Maybe that's what subconscious it is. plagiarism. Who knows? Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Uh, fashion sense, maybe. I guess I didn't show you the pictures. I'll post them up on Instagram so you can see the side okay. by side. But okay. eh, kind maybe. of a vibe, I have to assume. Kind of a vibe. Yeah, kind of a very vibe. specific vibe. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that Lady Gaga was at all any way, shape, or form involved with the death of Lena Morgana? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Nah. <laughs> that was pretty fast. <laughs> but yeah, I still want to know more about that boyfriend. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's like nothing. I found someone with the same name, their LinkedIn profile. I knew you were going to say that. And I'm like, there's no way I'm clicking on this. 
Like, just not going to do it. Use the Crackpot account. Now you're talking. <laughs> okay. That's smart. Super we'll that secret. Yeah. Trojan horse. <laughs> <laughs> does, crack, does Crackpot have a LinkedIn account? Yeah, yeah. Huge one. Okay, good. good. Posting stuff every day, motivational. We're always getting yeah, recommendations to refer other people to different jobs and stuff. It's weird. <laughs> so, I don't know. The whole thing, where do you come down? Well, here's what I'll tell you. Um, it is all pretty weird. Yeah. And there's enough, like... There are enough red flags where I could say, look, um, maybe there's more to the story here. I would be shocked if Lady Gaga was actively involved in the death. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But if she's, you know, flashing satanic cult signs. Left and and right. uh, Left and right. And uh, maybe had some insider knowledge of something. I mean, maybe. But no, I kind of don't think so. Yeah. I think probably not. I will say that her death was very suspicious. Yeah. And if I were one of the police officers working that case, I would have definitely interviewed Lady Gaga. Hmm. Talk to everyone involved with that whole scene because it's it's suspicious. It's weird. That being said, like, I don't I don't think anyone, you know, they get a hit record and it starts taking off and you fly to L.A. to film, you know, multi multi million dollar music videos. I don't think you're thinking in the back of your mind, you know, I should probably kill the person that i was coming up with no kidding it just doesn't really seem to jive necessarily but if we were ever on the brink of stardom yeah i would be on my absolute best behavior (laughs) i'd be like i gotta make i gotta make it go man no no suspicious deaths not gonna kill my co-host at least not this week (laughs) yeah right yeah i would never think that yeah oh it's a weird one it is weird it's dark but also very interesting All right, everybody. Well, that was your pop culture take for the week. So hopefully you liked it. You know what? Mm. We have a Patreon. We certainly do. You want to tell people about that? Well, let me tell you this much. It's the coolest Patreon in town. And if you sign up three, five, seven bucks a month, you get access to an extra bonus show every single week called every Wednesday, single week Thursday show. We take listener voice memos. We get feedback from people. It's just a jolly good time. It's fun. Um, but also it helps us pay the bills around here and keeps us moving. So <laughs> even if also not, you get all these shows ad free too. So oh, that's, that's huge. That's the other perk. Everything's ad free. Yeah. So check it out. Patreon.com slash crackpot podcast. Check it out. And while you're poking around the internet, if you can, leave us a review. Rate, review, subscribe, if you can, please. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your little monsters about our podcast, and we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.